Hi, wonderful caregivers. I'm Carol Howell with Let's Talk Dementia. I'm glad you've chosen to join me today. We're going to talk about dementia and dementia caregiving. I get lots of emails from you folks, and I love getting the ones that say, thank you for your work, you've helped me, and I look forward to your episodes. So thank you for sending those notes. Let me know what's on your, your mind. You can write me, and my email address is carol at letstalkdementia.org. And when you write me, I'm going to write you back. I just realized you can't see my pretty necklace. I should have put it on like that. Isn't it pretty? I really do like it. Now, it's not going to stay like that, but I won't move. <laughs> anyway, our website is www.letstalkdementia.org. When you go there, you will find everything that we produce, including our Amazon best-selling book, Let's Talk Dementia, and every our videos, our audios, our blogs, it's all at our website, including you can click on the contact button. You can write me there, and you can also make a donation if you're so inclined. We would really appreciate that. We um, work off of donations and have several needs right now in the company, and um, that would be so kind if you could donate. We also are going to be starting a fundraiser soon to ask folks to donate um, to purchase uh, copies of our Amazon best-selling book, Let's Talk Dementia, that we will give away. And those books will be given to hospice organizations and in-home care companies, families in need, in crisis, that we just have a large supply of those books just to give away. Because they're not cheap for us to buy. I'm just, I own the book, but I have to have it printed. It's not cheap, y'all. So if you're interested in donating to that, I thank you very much. Special thank you to Beth Crosby, Editor Extraordinaire. You reach Beth at www.editorbeth.com, and she will edit whatever it is you have in the written form. National Association of Veterans and Families, www.navf.org, 800-352-2919. They are there to help you get the benefits that the veteran and the spouse of the veteran both deserve. Tell them Carol sent you. Today we're going to talk about can Alzheimer's be stopped? Uh, well, no, it can't be. Not today. Not th I'm recording this as of September 24th, 2019, and the answer, unfortunately, is no. Oh, how I hope one day we watch this and go, she just didn't know what was coming. Oh, how wonderful that would be. So many times in my mom's journey, she had advanced Alzheimer's and went to live with the Lord on May 31st of this year, so it's only been a few months. But so many times I prayed, Lord, Please just stop Mama's dementia right where it is. Just don't let it progress anymore. Keep her where it is, and we'll take care of her as best we can. That was my prayer. That was not God's plan. Um, but I really wish it had been. But it wasn't, so her Alzheimer's was not stopped. If it could have been, we would have done it, right? And you would too. But can dementia be stopped? Well, yes, now dementia can be stopped depending on the reason for that dementia. Because as I've told you in many previous episodes, there is this thing called a reversible dementia. And dementia can be reversed when it's brought on by many different reasons. Among them is a urinary tract infection, addiction to drugs, or side effect of drugs, whether you're addicted or not, be having a side effect from them. Being intoxicated, you sober you up, you're not having issues anymore low vitamin b like in boy low vitamin d like as in dog sugar levels being high being low a tumor somewhere in the body lots of reasons for a correctable or reversible dementia so when people tell you they've cured dementia i want to say well yeah that's been going on forever but what we do is we get excited because all of a sudden we think we've cured Alzheimer's. Well, now that's different because you got to remember Alzheimer's is the thing that causes the dementia. So what we would have to cure would be Alzheimer's in this case. Um, but when, when the dementia is brought on by something other than Alzheimer's, then at this point there are many of them that they are correctable. Unfortunately, Alzheimer's type dementia, Parkinson's, Huntington's, Lewy body dementia, vascular dementia, these things um, are not curable and they're not being stopped. Now, what is the research going on? What is that? You'll hear there is a lot of research lately for a vaccine that will prevent Alzheimer's. Now, hey, I am loving that idea. 
if there was a vaccine that prevented Alzheimer's, I would be the first in line to get it. My grandmother had Alzheimer's and died from it. My mama had Alzheimer's and died from it. So you can bet I'm going to be very cautious in doing those things that will help reduce the chances of me getting Alzheimer's. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But if there were a vaccine, I would get it. And there may be one day. You think about the vaccines that are available now. And I know there's some of you that are against vaccines. You don't vaccinate your children. I'm not going to get into that conversation with you. That is between you and your kids and, and your maker. But in my world, we vaccinate. And, um, you know, my mom lived through polio. And people don't get polio anymore. And, and we're thankful for that. So if we can change the world where people don't get Alzheimer's, then that would be a good thing. But what is it that we can do to help prevent Alzheimer's? We can't stop it, so we know the answer to that is no. So what can we do not to get it, especially since there is not a vaccine? Well, now see, that is a very good question, and that is something we need to investigate. I'm going to be doing future shows about the connection between your belly. You can't see me. I'm patting down here. Ooh, your belly. Well, whatever. Your heart and your brain. What's, they call your belly your second brain. So what affects your brain? Maybe there's a connection with your belly. What uh, affects your belly? Maybe there's a connection with your brain. And we got to go all the way up here to the heart. There's a connection between those three things. So we need to think in our life, what is it we can do to bring good health to our belly, good health to our heart, and good health to our, our brain? All of those things are intertwined. So if it's good for your belly, it's good for your brain, it's good for your heart, and any combination of those three things therein, any order you want to put it in, it all affects the other. So what is bad for the belly is bad for the heart, is bad for the brain. And that's what you need to be thinking about in your life. What is it that's a part of your life that is not benefiting you? That's Mm, that can be a not so fun thing to think about because the things that are not benefiting you might be some of your most favorite things in the world. You know, like ice cream and birthday cake and potato chips and french fries. Oh, just give me a minute to think about french fries. <laughs> Sweets, sugar, and the inflammation that it brings about in the body is bad for you on every level. There's not a level ever where inflammation is our friend. It's not. Think about those things that are irritating to your belly. If they're irritating to your belly and they give you a belly ache, in my case, that would be meat. I can't eat meat. I can eat fish. I eat fish and shrimp. But no other meat can I eat. Tears my belly up. What does that do to me as a whole? Makes me tense. My shoulders start touching my earlobes. I don't look good like this, right? It keeps me from being happy, from being productive, from enjoying my life because my belly hurts from my ulcer. So I have to think about what are those things in my world specific to Carol that I need to be careful about in order to keep me as healthy as possible. And the healthier I can keep the belly, the heart, and the brain, the more I start reducing my chances of Alzheimer's. See, now that just makes sense when you think about how one thing affects the other in your body makes me think about that scripture that says that um, when the when the can the finger say to the ear that this is Carol's translation because I've got the body parts wrong but can the, can the hand say to the ear I don't need you and cut it off and no no it, this is not the way it works the, the body as a whole it takes each individual part to come together as a whole and to work to its optimum but if we're not taking care of those parts you know I think we've got a responsibility for that I think we are actually called to take care of this temple. Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? That's scripture. We have to take care of ourselves and in so doing, reduce our chances of Alzheimer's. Now, can you do all the right things and still get Alzheimer's? Yes. Can you do all the right things and still get cancer and heart disease? Yes. But have you reduced your chances greatly? Oh, yes, you have. And that's what it's all about. And I will tell you, too, when you realize doing the right things for your body, how much it affects your day-to-day -day life, your productivity, your ability to handle the stresses of life, the stresses of caregiving, just the stresses of everyday living, and then you go and you eat something you shouldn't. 
it's not near as much fun as you thought it would be. And I've experienced this lately with some birthday cake in the house. Yeah. That was tough stuff. Had to make some changes on the birthday cake. Because there are things that are just triggers for me. And that would be one of them, sugar. So I can't have it in the house. I tell folks it's very hard to come in my house and eat bad things because I don't have any bad things. So it's a very boring place to live. But I'm trying hard to keep my body healthy. And literally, um, on, on Sunday, we had birthday cake for my daughter. And I had a piece of birthday cake. And on Monday, I thought, oh, I want a piece of birthday cake. Then I thought... I don't want Alzheimer's. I don't want my body to hurt from sugar. I don't want my belly to hurt from sugar. I don't want to feel lethargic because I ate all that sugar. I don't want to be taking a supplement that gets inflammation out of my body and then put sugar in my mouth that causes inflammation. That makes no sense at all, does it? So you have to think about these things. It's a matter of stopping and being aware of what you are doing to or for your body and if you are not getting out and moving your butt, then you are not doing for your body what you need to. Maybe it's only 10 minutes in the morning that you have time to do that. Or you can take 10 minutes from lunch and walk. Just walk around the building or, or wherever. Just get out and move it. Or maybe it's 10 minutes before you go to bed. Something. Maybe you just get up and walk during the commercials when you're watching Grey's Anatomy. Which, P.S., when does that come back on? I need the new season to show up. So if you just got up and moved during the commercials, you would be surprised how many steps you would get in a day. Do some things to bring health to your body. And when you do, you're going to start redu reducing the chances of not just Alzheimer's, which <laughs> that's enough, isn't it? But lots of other issues also direct correlation between inflammation and alzheimer's let's break that cycle okay but if you are dealing with inflammation and uh, if you're pretty much breathing you probably are in our world then i recommend you go to infla-650.com there you will find a, pro a product called Infla 650, which has done wonderful things for myself and my husband. I don't get paid to tell you this. I don't sell the product. I am just that big of a believer in it. But I have issues with a nerve that runs down my arm all the way down to my thumb. And my thumb will tremor. But when I take Infla 650, let me get my hand over here. I get right there and it tremors for just a minute and it stops. And then it stops. But it would ache all the way up my arm. But without the Infla 650, no matter what I did, my thumb just tremored all the time. Which was very concerning for me because Mama had Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And I'm thinking, oh mercy. But no, it was that nerve. And so I started Infla 650 and it got so much better in my arm. The, the discomfort in my arm has gone down probably 75-80%. Maybe 86.58%. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> So check it out, infla-650.com. All right, well, that's my thoughts today about stopping Alzheimer's. I'm all for it. I'll be happy when we find the news that the vaccine is out there and the vaccine works and it doesn't have a thousand side effects. Oh, my, a lot to think about there, isn't it? It's going to happen one day. I really think it is. We've conquered other things. This this will be conquered. It has to be. Thanks to National Association of Veterans and Families for sponsoring our ministry, 800-352-2919. And Beth Crosby, wonderful editor, and you reach her at editorbeth.com. Well, as always, our show is in honor of the goodness of the Lord and all that He does for us every day and how unaware we are of it. And we surely need to be thinking more about that, too. But in memory of my sweet mama, look at her on that boat. I don't know whose boat that was, but obviously out on the ocean. Uh-huh, she was strutting her stuff. I like the way how her fingers, see over here, her fingers are up in the air there on her left hand. I'm telling you, that was my mama. She would she would put her hands out so you would notice her rings. Uh -huh. So she was even doing it then. <laughs> That's my mama. Blessings and smiles on your caregiving journey. Go give your L.O. a hug and tell him Carol said hello. Bye-bye.